And so over to you, Jeff, who will tell us now where SEEK has gone from those humble beginnings um, to where we are now. Well, thank you so much, you two, for planting that seed. It's um, Seed planting has rarely been so successful in my experience. This has been one of the most exciting things I've been part of in a, in a long career. Um, let me just share my screen now. Um, So is that is that okay? Can you see that? Um, I was um, I thought it'd be useful because quite a few people on the on the call are relatively new to Seeker to give you a bit of a run through of kind of how we got started and um, you know the story so far. So this was that meeting that um, that um, Carrie and Nicola were talking about, and it was as you can see the room was packed, and we there was it was very organic. There wasn't any kind of pre plan on um, what should come out of this, which was actually very refreshing. And different people were raising different, well, they're describing what they were doing. Um, but we came along with a bit of an idea and um, we kind of shared the idea that, that we'd been brewing in Stenning, with Greening Stenning. And a few of us, um, you know, shared the thought of, we're thinking of getting a campaign going around getting our councils to, to declare a climate emergency. We were so frustrated at that time um, that nothing was happening, that we thought this um, brand new climate emergency movement could give us some real um, um, kind of power to have impact. And we floated that to the group, who'd like to join us on this? And to our amazement and delight, pretty well every hand in the room went up. And um, within about two weeks, um, we had a, an organ, we'd chosen a name, we nicked the logo for, from the National Climate Emergency Group, and we had a website and we got going. Um, and this is how we've grown. So um, as you can see, we're up to 116 members. And on the right, you can see the breakdown of different kinds of groups. And it's a very nice diverse group from, you know, from, from faith groups, repair cafes, up to some national organizations. And the, the, um, the, the networks like Transition and Friends of the Earth and XR are very well representative, represented. But it's a diverse group, which I think is a real source of strength. This is where we're now based. And you'll see it's, it's actually quite wide across the southeast by now. In the beginning, it was clustered around, around Horsham for obvious reasons and the neighbouring parts of Surrey. But we've had a big growth in interest from Kent, East Sussex and Hampshire in the last year, which is really great. So we hit the ground running. Remember that that meeting was in early February? Well, it, it was within about two weeks that um, we had actually, we were outside the county hall in Chichester campaigning for their for a divestment vote. And this was a great example of, of strength in numbers because Worthing Climate Action were planning something and they said, who would like to come with us and help? And rather than being 10 people, we had 50 people there. And that was the beginning of actually making an impression in West Sussex. This was a few weeks later, um, a few months later in Horsham, where the same, um, the same approach worked. And luckily that year was a local election year. And we, we had the idea that we could use this as a leverage point. So this was our very first pledge campaign. And um, out of the 43 people who signed a pledge, 16 got elected, which we thought was really impressive. Um, and to our absolute amazement, the climate emergency movement took off. So this is a graph of how many councils in the southeast have either passed a motion um, or declared climate emergency in green or passed a reasonably significant climate motion. And to our, frankly, to our amazement, by January 2020, every single council in the region had done so. Now, we obviously can't claim all the credit for this because lots was happening, you know, um, Greta was happening, XR was happening, um, loads of things were happening, but I think we can safely say we really helped give this whole thing a nudge. So by the end of the year, it, the question arose really, is that job done? Is, is this, is Seeker's job now over? Well, needless to say, the, we didn't think so. We met up in January 2020, this was our first networking meeting, You'll notice the kind of slightly bizarre lack of masks on people's faces there. I can't even remember how that used to work, but we had a really wonderful kind of, um, um, it was kind of inspiring event, bringing all this talent, all this energy together 
in, in, um, in, in person um, in, in Horsham. And we're trying to recreate that um, today, but maybe next year's event we'll be back and be able to do it in person, let's hope so. And we talked there about what should, where should we go from here? And a number of ideas were mooted, some possibilities of some little sub networks on different themes came out of the woodwork. They didn't, um, didn't in, in fact go anywhere at the time, partly because of COVID, I'm sure. But the thing that we did agree on is that we needed to keep pressing for climate actions. So this kind of original focus on councils seemed to be an important niche. So in the year after that, we've been concentrating on developing our relationships with councils, in some cases working as kind of critical friends um, rather than banging on the door from the outside, a bit of a shift in our, in our kind of mode. But we've been doing a lot to try and share good practice and stir the pot. And we've also been keeping tabs on them. And uh, Sally and Alison have been doing sterling work on the Seeker Climate Survey, which if you've not seen, you need to take a peek at, because this is the best available source at the moment to show what every council in the area is doing. And coming into this year, it was once again, local election time. So we, we re-designed re, um, the pledge idea to the ABCD pledge, which most of you will know. And lo and behold, we got 331 pledges this time and 64 candidates elected. So that compares to 16 out of 43 last time round. So you can see how far we've got. Um, and the good news here is that we now have at least 64 kind of potential champions um, with, within these various councils across the region who we can, we can work with, we can follow up. So I think this, this pledging approach has really helped us open those doors. Now, I'm, I'm going to share a few words on how we're governed because some of you may be under the impression that um, we, we are a strong, well-funded organisation with, with an office and a, a large team of people ready to jump when, when anybody says jump. If, if, that, if, if so, then the illusion has worked because, in fact, the reality is very different. We are extremely light touch. We don't have a bank account or formal constitution. Um, the way we work is through a steering group, which is um, anybody is well, very welcome to come along. And um, I think at the moment there's about 30 or 40 good invitations and usually 20 or 25 come to most meetings. Above all, we're a coalition of like-minded groups just trying to make a difference and trying to figure out how we, by working together, we can actually really boost all of our efforts. But the thing which is important to recognize is it only works because a handful of people are taking the lead and doing all the work. And you'll probably recognize most of those people today because they're the ones giving presentations, facilitating groups. And um, um, you know, there's a, there's a core group who've been putting a lot of time into this. Um, and this is something we need to kind of work on to make this sustainable. But what have we learned? We've been going for two and a half years, and this, um, I shared this slide uh, a year and a half ago, and I think it's even more true now. First of all, strength in numbers is crucial. Um, we've really shown that. We've, we've been able to look much bigger than we really are by bringing together this alliance. And I think another thing that's helped is we've focused on a few achievable goals rather than trying to do everything. Um, I think it would have been easy to have tried to do everything and not done very much. But we seem to be adding value at the moment, um, filling a spot. We, we're not necessarily going to fill the same spot forever, but um, there's a, we need to be quite thoughtful, I think, about what is the role we're playing, what are we doing which is different from others. Um, but it certainly helps us all to feel part of something bigger. Um, the information role, I think, is appreciated. That's something I spend my time on but we've succeeded in looking bigger than we really are. Now, a couple more points. I think our non-party party political stance has, has helped. So we're welcomed in councils of all colors. Um, we've done a lot in a short time, but I think the big message from those of us at the center, this is hard work if we're gonna grow this. So we need to share that load better. So kind of a subject for the next few months, not just today, is where should we go from here? Um, and um, 
we certainly need more followers, but to go somewhere interesting, above all, we need more leaders and more doers. And those of you in the room, I think are our primary talent pool for this. And I know you're really busy with all the things you're already doing, but if you like the look of Seeker and you've got ideas, we wanna hear from you. Um, so the way to do that is our next steering group is on the, on the 19th. And if you'd like to play a role in shaping the future, come along. Um, there'll be details of, of, of um, how to take part um, following later, but thanks very much. I hope that helps.